Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the September 7, 2016 special meeting of the Daytona Beach Community Redevelopment Agency. We're delighted to have each of you with us this evening. At this time, I would ask that Ms. LaMagna re read the procedures for tonight's meeting. Good evening. Agendas are available in the front of the room on the table to my right. All of the exhibits pertaining to items on the agenda are posted on the bulletin board. Please feel free to view the exhibits at any time during today's meeting. You will be required to fill out a blue form to speak before the Community Redevelopment Agency. The blue forms are located next to the agendas in the front of the room. You must complete the sections that ask for your name, address, topic of concern, agenda item number, signature, and date. The form must be completed and placed in the designated box. You will not be allowed to speak as your, if your form is not placed in the designated box. Resolutions under administrative items number 6A are open. Oh, excuse me, resolutions under administrative item 6 are open for public comments and you may fill out a blue form to speak when that item is called. All citizens completing a blue form will be allowed to speak for two and a half minutes. When you approach the lectern, please speak clearly into the microphone and give your full name and address. The two and a half minute clock on the monitor above and directly in front of you will start running when you begin to speak. Pay close attention to your time. You will be told when your time has expired. Disorderly conduct in a public meeting of the City Commission. Article 2, Section 6238 of the City Code of Ordinances reads as follows. It shall be unlawful for any person to behave in a riotous or disorderly manner in any public meeting of the City Commission or any committee, agency, or board thereof or to cause any unnecessary disturbances therein by force, shouting, or any other action that is calculated to disrupt such meetings or to refuse to obey any ruling of the presiding officer or such, meet or such meeting relative to the orderly process thereof. All conversation must take place either at the lectern or on the dais so that everyone can hear the business being discussed tonight. Ms. LaMagna, may we have a roll call? Commissioner White? Here. Commissioner Gilliland? Here. Commissioner Henry? Here. Commissioner Reed? Here. Commissioner Traeger? Here. Commissioner Woods? Here. Mayor Derek L. Henry? Here. I will now have the invocation led by Commissioner Reed followed by the Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner White. Let us pray. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, Lord our God, we come before your throne again. First of all, just saying thank you. Thank you for the city of Daytona Beach, for its citizens, for its visitors, and just for the sunshine. And thank you, Lord, for the rain. We thank you for the opportunity to serve. And we pray that all that we do would be to glorify you and that all that we do would be a benefit to those that we serve. I ask this in the name of Jesus. And for his sake, let us all say, Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will now move on to item number 4A, approval of the minutes of the June 15, 2016 regular meeting of the Community Redevelopment Agency. I have a motion from Commissioner Gilliland and a second from Commissioner Henry. Do we have any questions or corrections? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Uh, likes not opposed, same sign. Uh, this motion passes 7-0. We'll now move on to item number five. It is our approval of our agenda. If there are any changes, our city manager will read them at this time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We had a have a addition to the agenda item 6b midtown loss redevelopment incentive agreement uh, to this agenda second i have a motion from commissioner gilliland and a second from commissioner traeger all those in favor let it be known by saying aye aye, aye. likes not opposed same sign motion passes seven zero Okay, we will now move on to item number six. It's our administrative items. Item number 6A is the Budget Department Tentative Fiscal Year 2016-2017 Budget Adoption for the Community Redevelopment Agency. And I'll go ahead and read the resolution before we have public hearing. It's a resolution tentatively adopting the budget for the fiscal year October 1st, 2016 to September 30th, 2017 for the Community Redevelopment Agency of the City of Daytona Beach, prescribing the net sources of revenue in the estimated amount of $5,800,028, setting forth operating expenditures and transfers in the amount of $5,800,028, and providing an effective date. 
So moved. Second. We have a motion from Commissioner White and a second from Commissioner Woods. Uh, okay. Do you have, do have speakers, speakers, Mr. Mayor? Our first speaker is John Nicholson, and on deck is Mike Pastore. John Nicholson, 413 North Grandview Avenue. Um, I'm having trouble reconciling some of the numbers that I got from the city and some of the numbers I got from Volusia County and the numbers that were presented last month at your budget hearing. Um, on the Main Street CRA, you come out with a uh, total of $4,113,439 as a total. Um, you're going to spend $2,513,357 on debt which leaves about $1,600,000, give or take a little penny. The county has us going up $390,000 in revenue from last year to this year. The city has us going up $7,000. So to me, there's a big difference. It has now been eight years, a little over, since David, our project manager for the Main Street area, left. We're the only CRA without a project manager with a million six hundred thousand dollars and from what the staff tells me we have a budget of two hundred and seventeen thousand dollars that we have to pay out for staff so it leaves us about a million four hundred thousand dollars to hire a project manager I think it's time that we need our project manager for the uh, Main Street area there's plenty of money to have it thank you our next speaker is Mike Pastore Good evening, Mayor, Commission. Uh, Mike Pastore, uh, 1508 Virginia Avenue. I'm going to speak on uh, uh, the CRA uh, budget. Uh, I'm just getting acquainted with issues other than my main, main issue, of which, of course, you know is the treatment of the homeless or non-treatment of the homeless. But... It seems to me that when you say CRA, it means Community Redevelopment Authority. That's right, Tish? Or is it authority? Agency. Agency. Okay, well, I'm told that it's a, it's, a, it's a fund, a slush fund from the county given to the cities, to, you know, to do projects that uh, uh, help with... Uh, ameliorating blight and I can't think of any other project that would ameliorate that would mitigate blight it's a better word to pronounce mitigate blight blight than helping uh, with our issue with uh, street homelessness um, in the past we've seen uh, you know Al Smith selling jello shots up on uh, up on Main Street, we've had these parties and all that, and all this comes out of this slush fund. Okay, so I, I would urge uh, that, uh, we, that our community activists start, uh, start putting pencil to paper to actually where this money's going. Uh, we really need to have it used the way it's intended. Neighborhood stabilization, giving people grants to fix up their houses and taking areas that, uh, that need to come up you know that that would that need to come up other than uh somebody's pet project and using it as a slush fund that's all i got for now thank you, thank you. that was our final speaker on item 6a okay uh do we have any uh questions or comments here from the commission? I just want to make one other comment uh, in reference to some of the comments that were made. We've used the money over the years repeatedly to try to improve the neighborhoods, neighborhoods incentives and all the CRAs. We've also for years used that money to fund the streets team for the homeless in our CRA. So I just want to point out the two things you talked about, that's exactly how we've used a part of our money for many years. Okay. Okay. Do we have any other comments from the commission? Uh, okay, hearing none, we uh, we have a motion and we have a second. All those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Likes not opposed, same sign. This motion passes 7-0.
Okay. We'll now move on to item number 6B, which is our agenda item. It's the Development and Administrative Services Planning Division, Midtown Lofts Redevelopment Incentive Agreement. And I do have a number of speakers. Okay. Okay. Our first speaker is John Nicholson, and on deck is Gwendolyn Smith. John Nicholson, 413 North Grandview Avenue. I just literally, a few minutes ago, um, Letitia told me where the boundaries are on this property. If anything is going to uh, have a major impact, I know we went through all this uh, uh, meetings on what's good for the area and how to upgrade it and whatnot. This singular project We'll do all of that plus more. It's on the main street. Hopefully, we are going to um, redo that street. We, I, I've been pushing that. Others have been pushing between Orange Avenue and International to be redone. Martin Luther King needs to be redone in that area. It would make a complete section for that area. With this property facing Martin Luther King, it will have a dynamic impact across the street, behind it, which the city owns. I'm asking the city if there's any, it looks like there's still property that the city owns that's not going into this project, that they find a uh, reason to RFP that property to help increase what this property is going to do. Thank you. Our next speaker is Gwendolyn Smith, and on deck is Maxwell Murphy. Good evening. Good evening. Mayor Henry. Ms. Smith. And your staff, commissioners. My name is Gwendolyn Smith. Um, I'm sorry, ma'am. Can you approach the, mic, the okay. microphone? My name. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. My name is Gwendolyn Smith. I'm a resident of MLK. I uh, I grew up there. I've been there since 1953, and I've seen a lot of things come and go, mostly gone and never return. And as I drive down that street, some days I say, "Oh, I wish." This could be better. I wish that could be better. I wish there was more lighting. So my request today is, I would love to see the city move on with this project. And I'm speaking for every one of my neighbors. I'm 68 now, and I would love to see it before I get 70. Okay, so they need to get it on. Okay? Our next speaker is Maxwell Murphy, and on deck is Sandy Murphy. Uh, Max Murphy, 136 Park Avenue. And uh, we really have a problem with uh, housing for working class families in Daytona Beach. Uh, there's a lot of homeless people that would not be on the streets if they had a place to go. A lot of families in particular that would not be on the streets if they had a place to go. And... Uh, that's why it kind of baffles me that uh, first-class housing for college kids is the project that has been settled upon and why it's having the uh, all that money thrown at it. And uh, I'd also like to comment about this being added so quickly to the agenda right before the meeting. Why do that? If you there's if Why would you do that unless you aren't willing to subject it to scrutiny? It just doesn't make any sense. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Sandy Murphy, and on deck is Ann Ruby. Good evening. Sandy Murphy, 136 Park Avenue. Um, even though I didn't know what he was going to say, I would agree with my son, who just spoke to you. Um, giving us two and a half hours notice that this was going to be on the agenda, I think is unconscionable. It is an extremely complex project. It deserves some scrutiny. Several of us came up to you when this was first presented and explained the numerous areas of concern in terms of the budgeting. Um, not that it is not desirable to have a tremendous development in Midtown. It's desirable to have a tremendous development that will work. And this was not a good project. The data is poor, and I'll talk about that in the next meeting. 
but their their projections are very um, optimistic, let us say. And putting a project that will go bad into Midtown is almost worse than putting no project in there at all, especially when it's diverting funds that could be used for a number of other things. And when I look at the Midtown Development Plan, in that area, what's called for is mixed use properties, small retail, not housing properties. So the idea is if you're going to be planful and set out a plan and explain what you want to do in the future, then why just throw it away as soon as somebody comes with an idea in their hand? Um, rather than us being proactive, understanding what it is we want, going out and looking for developers who can bring projects that do exactly what we need done in this town. Uh, it feels like we are ready to just take anything that comes our way, give them as much money as they need, and then we'll just you know hope for the best. Last time we talked about the Lotus Inn, there was a lot of, of interest because the developer was somebody from this local area. This is not the case here. You know, we're not building our local community up, and I just think that this is, it's too rushed to give it true consideration, and I'd like to have you think about it much more before you commit the kind of money we're talking about. Our next speaker is Ann Ruby, and on deck is Kim Brown Crawford. Hi, Ann Ruby, 137 Park Avenue. I'd like to start where Sandy ended and say that if this is a good project, if it's a great project, it will be good in a month, it will be good in two months. I understand that everybody's got time constraints, but I think this project is being pushed and rushed too quickly and too fast. I'm con I am all for beautiful development in Midtown. I'm not speaking against this project for that reason. I think development in Midtown is critical and it would be wonderful to have a viable project. I don't know that this is that project. 40% of our homeless people are homeless because they're working and they can't find a place that they can afford. And at the very least, it could be considered to ask this developer, rather than to make this entire building luxury student housing, make 25% of the units footprinted and configured for working families, and then make the rents appropriate for those working families. That's done in cities all the time, particularly when the developer is requesting uh, money from the city. I'm also very just as a process issue, very upset with how this process came, was handled. A few months ago, Rob Gilliland, just at city commission remarks, mentioned that he'd been talking to this developer for six months, and now it was imperative that the city pay an ombudsman $25,000 right that minute. We had to decide that right that minute, because otherwise it was all going to evaporate or something. I don't know. And without public comment, which I have since learned was required since you were voting to, to it was, it was a, an item in a second, public comment was not allowed and it should have been. And only two commissioners had the courage to stand up and say, wait, we need more information before we vote to spend this money. Because as soon as you spent that $25,000, this was a runaway freight train that's headed for approval. And I really think this project needs more consideration, not because it's necessarily a bad project, but because I don't think it's the best thing that could be possible for Midtown. And I think that's all. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker is Kim Brown Crawford, and on deck is Mike Pastore. Good afternoon. My name is Kim Brown Crawford, 376 Alethea Drive. Um, First of all, thank you for putting this on the agenda, even though it was added at a last minute. I'm here today because I was born and raised in Daytona for one reason, and I have listened to the concerns and the questions that have been raised. And what I have found out, or what I believe, is that as long as I have lived in Daytona Beach, I am not aware of any local developer wanting to invest that type of money in Midtown. If I'm wrong, somebody please correct me because I like to learn something new every day. Uh, and I also believe that Mr. Ivey found a developer to assist with this project in this community. Not only have I not seen anybody local come to the table with this type of money, 
I'm not really sure what the city's position has been back and forth to actually redevelop that area because it just hasn't been developed. Um, I sat at a restaurant yesterday and I can look to the north, to the south, to the west, to the east of me, and all of those buildings either have broken glass, um, it looks attempt as if someone had tried to go in and whether someone was staying there. The area is just, just blah, it's just dead. And for it to carry a name that it carries is really embarrassing. And I feel that the city or someone, our developers have come forward and I applaud them for even taking interest in our community. Again, like I said, I have not, I'm not aware of any local developer coming forth to say I want to do that. And as it relates to the funding, and I'm sure you guys will speak of this, um, what I believe that's being asked for is nothing different than any other developer coming into this area asking for an incentive, whether it's TIF or whether it's loan money. And I really would consider, I hope you all consider that we get this project moving because I know one lady said that um, there's not a rush and maybe it has been going on for a while, but if I'm an outside developer and I'm invested in your community and there seems to be a fight, I would take my funds Our next speaker is Mike Pastore and on deck is Marjorie Johnson. Mike Pastore. <laughs> 1508 Virginia Avenue. I'm not anti Midtown and I'm not anti uh, helping Midtown to grow. Um, I, what I have an issue with is that, uh, Mr. City Manager, this doesn't pass the smell test, okay? You don't uh, shove this, uh, you know, on the, on the agenda at the last minute without giving people a chance for, for public comment. To, to scrutinize this. I'm sure there might be other other people that would, would like to speak on this issue, but you know, you look on the website, well, it's not there. We show up at City Hall, it's there. It's at the last minute. Well, you know, there's just too many of these instances where these things get added. And then you've got the, then you got these gentlemen, they knew about it, okay, because where are they from? Uh, Boca Raton, the carpetbaggers from down south come up here to, you know, to try to get some money out of us to make a profit. Their, their motives are not, are not altruistic. They want to make money. And this is the way they want to do it. All right, Mr. Mayor, I, I heard you pander to the audience uh, over at uh, Midtown. Please stay on topic. I am staying on topic that Be you courteous. promised that you promised to Midtown that, that you were going to do this. Okay, so uh, I just feel that it's being sh it's being shoved up our noses uh, in a hasty fashion. Uh, Commissioner Gilliland's got to get uh, McKittrick to lobby lobby the city, an ex employee lobbying the city on behalf of the developer. Uh, you, you know, excuse me for scrutinizing that scenario. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, it just doesn't pass the smell test. I'm sorry, all right? If I'm bringing it up, there are other people that, uh, that are, are thinking the same thing, but they won't, they won't come out and say it. Well, I'll tell you what, I will. That's all I got for that. Excuse me. Our next speaker is Marjorie Johnson, and on deck is Linda Smiley. Marjorie Johnson on 22 South P Street. Uh, I'm in agreement with the other speakers that have spoke here. I think that this project would be scrutinized, and I'm in, I'm in favor of development in Midtown. Lord knows we've been neglected for many, many years, and I don't care who is sitting up here. We didn't get anything. I think this price tag is rather high. I would like to have seen you all get more bids from other developers and contractors besides this particular contractor. Uh, we know in the past that CRA's money has been misused. We had an audit taken, and we don't want our CRA funds going to this high price here. And I think that, you know, we need other bids in here. You're hastily rushing this up into our community. We can still have this project, but this price tag is too high. And I don't know why you would just rush and put this on the agenda, and we not get a chance to have 
people look at everything that could be done before you, you put this forward, project forward. So I would say to you today that uh, the price tag is too high, and I do smell a rat. And, and, and if you're using our CRA funds and misusing them, like we've done in the past, for this particular developer, then that, there must be something wrong going on. So I would encourage all of you here today, before you make this decision, to look at bringing other contractors and developers in here and just not go with this one developer. Why do we have to use this, this developer? And I also am in agreement with what was said about you, Mr. Yellow Land. I don't think we need to rush into anything. I think we need to take our time and we need to look at other bids and not just rush and accept this higher price. I'm totally against the price and this developer. Thank you. Our final speaker is Linda Smiley. Linda Smiley, 357 Manhattan Avenue. Um, this project is being pushed through too fast. High-end housing is the last thing needed in Midtown right now um, for college students. Um, I, I think that there definitely needs to be development in Midtown, but I, I have a problem with this developer. Uh, he's been buying up property for a while, as was reported in here a few weeks ago. Um, if this project is so good, let him put his money up instead of first, instead of asking for us to to chip in. Every time somebody comes here to this city and says they want to develop here, you guys jump and say, "How high? You know, how much do you want?" Carte blanc. And we're tired of you giving our money away without any kind of study and or input about it. Um, this this should have a lot more scrutiny um, put to it than what you're allowing here by shoving it on the agenda at the last minute. Um, I think Midtown desperately needs some projects there. I'm not against that. Um, but I think as Ms. Ruby can't put out, there could be a mix of high-end and affordable housing mixed in there. And I, I think that you guys need to barter a little bit better than you do. Um, I think that you're just willing to give it to them. As soon, whatever they ask for, you're willing to give. And you don't, at, when I'm sitting here, you ask no questions. Um, I mean, really, it, it's pathetic. It really is. Um, I just think if this project is so wonderful that it will wait, it won't disappear in a cloud of smoke within, you know, uh, if you don't make a decision tonight. So I, I think that um, enough people have put that forward to you, and I think you ought to take heed of it. And Mr. Mayor, I do have Mr. Morrison here on behalf of the applicant. Okay. Um, Mayor Commission, I'm Jim Morris. I'm an attorney. I represent the developer. I also work with him as Ivy. Mr. Ivey's lived in this community for 54 years. I've lived here almost 65. I came from Halifax Hospital, not somewhere down south, and we're not carpetbagging. I want to talk about this agreement and what people are saying. From the perspective of the agreement, it deals with private property and private money and investment of those assets by a private entity in this community. The agreement is a TIF agreement. The only place that money comes from is, in, is from the improved tax value that my client will create, and they will create every penny of that without a single dollar from public money. There are performance standards in the agreement. And it's, it's interesting to hear the people say that, well, this can wait. It has been waiting for quite some time, and commission members, you know that we've been working with staff to reach an agreement, and we've finally reached one. And to say that the staff somehow didn't take this to task or take us to task is by people that don't know anything about what they're talking about. From the standpoint of the community, you've heard people from the community speak in favor. And if you remember, if you've been here long enough, you remember when that part of town was a vibrant part of town. It was an active commercial community, and there was a lot that happened there. But as time went by, the community left. Sunshine Motors used to be down there. It's gone. Other things were there. On the other hand, Bethune-Cookman is rapidly growing with population. I think they have a record class for this coming year. So, and also from the perspective of this agreement, this is the first step. We still have to go through a zoning agreement with the city, and we have to have community meetings associated with that. And this is going to have everybody will have an opportunity to comment that wishes to comment. But for people to somehow infer or think 
that this is public money going towards a private project shows that they don't understand a thing about what they're talking about. This is all money that if it is earned, it's earned through a tax incentive agreement by performance. And if anyone would say to you that, well, Midtown doesn't need development, and this is really about as close as you can get to the center part of Midtown without crossing over ISB, I think those folks are really putting their heads in the sand. And let me say something about the comments that have made, been made about hiring McKittrick and his group and their analysis that they did. They were hired by the City Commission to do an analysis and to investigate the numbers. And some of the folks that have spoken about numbers and projections may be referring to the numbers that were generated by the McKittrick group. The only way that my folks had input on that was to provide information that they requested. And also for those folks that characterize this as lobbying the City Commission, I know that they did not, and I think you all know that they did not either. But people say that because it sounds spicy and it sounds like something's wrong or they smell a rat. They don't smell what's going on. They don't have any idea about what's going on. They'd say, well, we just don't know enough about it. The agreements have been before the city and they've been in the public records. We've still got to go through a zoning agreement and none of this takes any effect unless and until my clients get the zoning that they're required to have to build the project and they've got to build the project. And when you look at the agreement, and I know that y'all have looked at different versions, it's triggered by the issuance of a CO on the property. That means that my client's full investment in the property is there and that investment will exceed $11 million of their money and with that money, they will hopefully have an improved tax base that they can have some rebate of that money in the increased tax values that they pay. That's the only way that they get it. It isn't, it's funny to say it's our money. That's like Congress saying they want to share their tax dollars with us. They're our tax dollars. People pay those tax dollars and you have an opportunity to earn them back through the TIF program. So those things are all a part of what I think you've got to take into account and this is not something that has been rushed in terms of its placement on the agenda. I'll admit that it happened rather quickly, but uh, Mr. Jagger and I have been working, I think, for probably six or eight weeks trying to work through an agreement that we could all live with. So we've still got a long way to go with zoning. People want input. They can have it. People want to argue about affordable housing. They can come back and make that argument in the zoning agreement. There is a long way to go from here. What we're talking about right now is just dealing with the incentive program that this has been handled in the same fashion as any others have been in the past with the city and as I thought somebody brought the Lotus Hotel it's private money too this is private money that's really where this thing stands and for folks to try and make it into something else I think is for purposes of the statement value not the correct analysis of what's occurring with the agreement or what will occur with the development of the property I appreciate the Commission's consideration sitting as a CRA I know we've got another hearing to go as the Commission I'll be available to answer questions Mr. Jagger is intimately familiar with this as well and certainly look forward to any questions that you might have okay. thank you Commissioner. thank you sir all right do we have any questions or comments from the commission i know we have a motion in a second I do. yes ma'am well i'd like to point out that the very first incentive that they're asking for is something we've never done before and we just had this conversation at one of our budget hearings in which we don't waive fees and so they're asking for over half a million dollars for us to cover their permitting, impact fees, connection fees, et cetera. And as it says in our backup, we have never given this incentive to any project. Talking about if you give the TIF, you know, and as the value increases, that's what we normally do, not this. The second one, 75,000 contribution for land acquisition. Again, we have not contributed funds to this type of incentive of the, in the past. And I will tell you my real big concern with this money is there is no money left in Midtown CRA once this is done. There is no reason for the Midtown Redevelopment Board to meet because the money is gone. And I want this project to happen. And like we said before, I have no problem using the TIF and, and the increase in value as we've done with other projects. But these A and B, I absolutely flat out will not support. Um, the city in Part D to do the 400,000 construction and parking and stormwater. Again, a lot of times the projects we reimburse, you know, the private developer will do, we reimburse fees. We're going to do this ourselves up front, correct, Jim? So, you know, we are making an investment of $400,000 ourselves to do that over and above what they'll get. Great project in terms of if they want to come do it, but I'm not willing to move forward with what is proposed tonight at all. Okay? Um, and I, I, do, I do think that before we do anything, that if, if you choose as a body to move forward, and I'm a minority vote, there, is a, there are a couple of things I really encourage you all to do. I'm very concerned about their financing 
because we've not been able to get hard information on that. When I met with staff yesterday, what is also unusual in this agreement, normally agreements, and correct me if I'm wrong, Bob, are only hard cost. This proposal is asking us to do hard and soft cost, which again is unheard of for us in agreements that we typically do. I, I have major concerns about their ability to finance and do this project, and I do not want to see something else down there on MOK like we already have right now, even though this would be much larger. I think we need to be very, very careful if you choose to move forward with it the way it's written. Just be careful. That's all. Okay, do we have other comments? Uh, let, me, let me start by just asking a couple of questions. The, um, the only, I guess, project description that I, I'm seeing is a very conceptual uh, plan that says six-story, 82-unit apartment building. Um, is, is there any way that we could have a, a better description of, of this project? Um, I don't know if there's a more detailed site plan. Does anything like that exist? We've not been provided a more detailed site plan than what you have in your packet that's attached to the agreement. And that's not typical when we're looking at these sort of incentive agreements, is it? Okay. No. Um, the, there, there were a couple things said that I want to clarify, and that was um, that there is no public money going into this. And um, as I'll echo Pam, there is money of $75,000 going into it, uh, permitting fees in excess of $500,000 and $400,000 of a public improvement, which I will say I think is a, is a good public improvement that will benefit the area. Um, I am... Uh, I think to give 100% of TIF is a very strong um, investment, and I have no, I, I still stand by my statement that I made when we began talking about this, that I uh, want to encourage development in that area so much that instead of doing our typical 50%, I'm fine with 100% of TIF. Some of these other things uh, do concern me, and I did discuss with the city attorney, uh, we put a number of $11 million in there. And I think this is kind of where you're going, Pam. And I think the reason that we had to actually put a dollar amount in there is because we don't have a lot of information about the project. So we're trying to give the project some sort of form by giving it a value. And the way that the contract has come back to us, that $11 million is not a construction value in any way that I've ever understood a construction value. Um, Gary, I think you're... you're um, your memo called a construction value, but when I read uh, Bob's contract, the construction value includes things like acquisition costs. And in the memo that uh, Bill Redman's group gave us that did a little bit of analysis for us, he had determined that while the market value of the land that needs to be acquired for this is about $300,000, the actual acquisition costs were well over a million dollars. So that already gets added or, or actually subtracted from that $11 million of construction value. Um, furthermore, that paragraph on construction value went into soft costs that are somewhat um, subjective. And um, I would be comfortable supporting this if we could define the construction value in a little bit uh, more firm, uh, objective terms, and if we could uh, delete the section about a $75,000 economic incentive um, and the, the waiving the impact fees is not something that we've ever done, and I don't know that we want to start to waive all of our fees. I have no problem with the $400,000 of... Um, of public money being spent on the stormwater improvements and the parking, and I have no problem with giving away 100%. That's 100% of the TIF that would be generated from this project. So there would be no t new tax value um, as a you know directly coming from this value, and I'm fine with that. I think it's such a great project in theory, if what I kind of understand the project to be, um, that it's it's worth going ahead and letting uh, somebody privately, like Jim Morris said, put their money into uh, creating value. Um, those are my thoughts on what we literally just got a couple hours ago. I'd like to ask a question. Uh, the TIF would be only on this property if other properties um, seem to get more valued because of this. That goes into the regular thing. It does not pay this property? That's correct. Okay, so this is only on this one particular property that the TIF money is coming back. If we don't build it 
there's no TIF money anyhow, correct? Right. Okay. But if it does kind of boost the other properties around it and the, and uh, they have TIF, that TIF comes to the city. Uh, that's correct. And that's, in fact, the justification for the entire agreement. That is the public purpose is that this project would be deemed by the commission to be a catalyst for further development in the area. Is there a time limit on when this should be built? Uh, yes, it's five years from the date of the agreement. Is there a uh, uh, some kind of thing that they cannot just go ahead and flip it to anybody? There is an assignment clause. It, it does allow assignment with consent of the city, and it requires them to produce the financial uh, information of the assignee, and the city can approve or disapprove uh, of the assignment based upon that documentation. In other words, if this developer did not go ahead with it, it's a, a five-year time limit. Is, would that be even if he sold it to somebody else, it would still the five-year time limit? Uh, yes, the, uh, the assignee would take the project subject to all the terms and conditions of the incentive agreement. From the time that we start the incentive agreement? Yes. And it would be based on the city saying yes or no? Correct, and the CRA. Okay, thank you. Comments, questions. The uh, you know I I made it very clear uh, to this group that uh, I had a serious problem with that assignability piece. Um, the problem in my eyes is that you, you see somebody come in and get a package together, and then their intent that perhaps is never to build it, but to but to sell it. And when you've got what amounts to five million dollars in public incentives, I mean this is the biggest incentive package ever for a project. It's almost a third of the total project costs. Um, you know, it's something that, you know, I've, I've, I've said I'm, you know, I, mean, I think it's, it's Kelly echoed, you know, doing some things different with this because this is, this is a very important project and it's an area that is, is really in need of outside dollars being pumped into it. But I have a, uh, uh, I, frankly, I said flat out I would not support this uh, when I talked with Emmis last week if there was an assignability clause in here. Um, I, I have heard yesterday, the, and, 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 I, and I, uh, I don't want to put words in their mouths, but my understanding now is that they don't have any intention of being the operator, that they plan on selling it before, you know, and having somebody else, somebody else operate it. So now all of a sudden we're making this, this, this significant commitment, and we're not even going to know who, who might come in, if somebody's willing to buy it, and if so, who that party might be. And the only right that we would have based on this agreement to deny that transfer would be if their financials showed they couldn't handle it. So, you know, we, we wouldn't have the right to deny it under any other cause. So, you know, unfortunately, the, the one point of this that was a, a, a breaking point for me is still in the agreement. So I will not be supporting this. Wait, let me, let me ask a question about the assignability. So... Um, are you talking about assignability after it's built, or uh... assignment could occur at any point? Okay. You can stand up, Tim. You want to address that? Uh, Mayor Commission, I'm reading from the development agreement that you're considering. It's at paragraph seven point two, page seven. Right. Oh, I'm, you're right. I see. It's upon Gen completion. general assignment upon completion assignments. of all developer obligations set out herein and city approval of these obligations by issuance of a CO, developer may assign all its right title and interest in and to blah, 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 provided the city gives consent, which shall not be unreasonably withheld. So that can't happen unless the project is built, and then the city commission has to approve it. So there isn't the instance, which I think has been assumed to be a fact, that it could be assigned at any time. It can't be. We have provided in the 7.1, we can have a development company created, which would be a subpart of what my clients already have, to develop the property. And we've discussed that with the staff, and I think the staff understands that it's basically a, a, the same entity forming a new corporation. And, and finally, and I'll sit down because you give me the opportunity to answer a question, and I'm not going to try to get further than you've let me. They've never made the statement of not operating, Mr. Gill, and they'll come up to speak to that if you wish, but I'm not sure where that came from, but that is not a true statement. So, at least from their perspective, that's their position. So, okay. thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I'll, okay. Uh, thank if you. you got more questions? I'll come. Uh, just so I'm, I'm just asking a question. Are you concerned about it being sold after it's completed? 
Or are you? What's your concern about the assignability? So once it has the CO, it can be sold, and they can be marketing it prior to it even being complete, completed. Right. Um, you know, they're going to need to sell this thing for you know well above a hundred thousand dollars a door to be you know a unit to be able to to make a profit on this thing. And what's going to make this possibly appealing to Jim? You can sit down. Okay. The uh, you know one of the things that might make that will make this appealing to a potential buyer, you know, is the fact that there's five billion dollars in public incentives that went into this thing. And you know when when I got into these conversations, while you know last year sometime, um, you know the the Heron as a company and and their successes in other areas is what got my interest. Um, to find that they actually not only that, that you know they're insisting that this be transferable you know this isn't something that's negotiable to them this is a deal breaker for them they will not build the project unless they have the right to sell it once it's co and that that's that's bothersome to me because you know we don't know who is going to end up with the property so it is a uh, um it, it's it's something that i you know I don't want to see a repeat of what happened, and even though it's not directly the same with uh, the Ocean Walk shops. You know, that, that agreement was wrong. When that thing went into bankruptcy, and we're not talking about bankruptcy here, we're talking about a sale, you know, the city should have been relieved of its obligation. And, and if the agreement, somebody made a mistake on when that agreement went through. Uh, we do have the bankruptcy clause in here in a different section. But, you know, I, uh, you know if we're going to make literally the largest incentive package available ever <laughs> that certainly since I've been on the commission and that I've ever heard of, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking for some more assurances on what I'm, what I'm seeing here. You know, I, this, uh, uh, the, the hundred percent of the, of the tip for the 18 years, you know, I don't, you know, then that's when the, the CRA runs out. That's something that is, you know, the, the public benefit once again is the, the catalyst, catalyst of this, you know, project could serve as to, to further development, but you know we're going to take all of the money out of out of the the uh, Midtown CRA trust fund. There won't there will be, I think there will in come October there'll be what ninety six thousand dollars in there. Um, are we even going to have the money to do any improvements on MLK if we pull all this money out? We're talking about in in uh, um, in Gary's agreement. He's talking about the fact we're going to have to terminate the JLL agreement. You know, we have to cancel that initiative that we've been on for years to make funds available to be able to afford this project. So, I mean, it's it it it, it is getting extremely expensive. And the, my point of you know months ago asking that we we get somebody like Paul to come in who has ex experience in dealing with these agreements, um, you know, knows the history what the city's done. It was this was the point. You know, let's figure out what is the deal that 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 is, you know, the, that they can live with, you know, and bring it to the city and see whether or not we can afford it. And, you know, in this case, it's, you know, it, it I'm, I'm not sure it's affordable. And when you throw into it the, the fact that we don't know who's going to actually be operating this thing, you know, it, it pushes me over the edge to where I'm, you know, I'm going to need some more assurances before I'm willing to move forward with, with an incentive package. Okay. Um, you know, Commissioner Henry or yeah. Commissioner Reed. Have JLL put anything on the table that we know of? So that's, a, that's kind of a moot point to me. As far as who's going to operate it, and what I'm understanding, whoever is going to operate it would have to have the financial means to operate it, and the city would have to agree to allow to, to, to that clause. Is that correct? Just in terms of the sale. Yeah. That's correct. In fact, I can just read that language very yeah. quickly. It says the city and CRA may consider, among other factors, the reputation, experience, and financial ability of the proposed assignee. So those are, that would be the basis for your consent or non-consent. Okay, and I, I'm to understand that they can only sell it after it's built. That's correct. Upon completion of the okay. obligations, yes. All right. Thank you. Commissioner Reed. First of all, let me say that when we had our strategic plan meeting, planning meeting, every one of us had this at the top of our list. We all want something to happen in Midtown. How be ever, when I look at this 
and the briefing that I had yesterday and the calls that I made again today to talk to the, to the attorney to make sure I understood this. <clears throat> this is an awesome amount of money. And exhausting the CRA for Midtown is, is not what I think people have voted for me to sit in this seat and do. I think that um, this perhaps needs to be an RFP and see if someone else is interested in providing this type of service for us. When I broke down some of the things, I said, well, other than those who are going to build this, what's the economic benefit in the end on permanent jobs? And it only indicates there are going to be four. I said, well, will the values of the properties around it increase or decrease? We don't know. Um, the site itself is already not aesthetically pleasing. So we're not going to buy across the street to go with this side of the street. Who's going to want to move in these nice lofts and have the tire shop across the street? Um, I don't know if there's a precedent that's been set in our county where lofts or apartments have, been, have spurred development. I'm a proponent that we should start with businesses, since that's how we used to boom with businesses, and the businesses will bring the housing. We have enough housing in Zone 6 right now that this isn't what I think needs to be done. So I said, well, what's the community benefit for this project? For me, it's very vague because all we have is a square drawing. There is no site plan defining this project definitively. It's just a box of drawing of what's being proposed. And um, this is an incredible amount of money to have nothing concrete. Then I went on and I said, the only money I foresee the developer bringing forward, and correct me if I'm wrong, is the purchase of the properties where this is going to take place. Am I right? Well, at some point, of course, they'd have to construct a, to the $11 million valuation. Mm -hmm. right. At some point. Right. But that can be delayed because the closing cost on these properties has been delayed. Am I correct? They would need to close first on the properties and obtain their zoning. Okay. When you start looking at what they're asking for um, that Commissioner Woods alluded to that we don't normally do, soft cost, $538,000 from the Midtown CRA. That's over half a million dollars. That includes everything but sticks and bricks. I'm going to break that down. Building permit fees, the title insurance, realtor fees, impact fees, attorney fees, architect fees, architect design, utility connection fees, property acquisition, appraiser fees. We're doing everything. We're giving them everything, $538,000. Then you come down and they want $75,000 in cash to purchase a lot. You come down further, $3,600,000 from the TIF, which will exhaust the CRA, which means nothing else could possibly be done. I have a problem with this. I don't have a problem with the $400,000 because we'd already agreed that we would make those, those changes. And then when you look further, there's $10 left for liens on each parcel for the project they're projecting. The total CRA and city incentives for this project are $4,623,000. Now, I'll be the first to say something needs to be done in Midtown. And I don't intend to sit in this seat for another four years and nothing is done. But I don't think this is the right project. When I asked why this project, the, the answer to me was because nothing else is being done. Well, for me, that does not substantiate that this is the project that should be done. I think the citizens deserve something that's going to bring life to this community. We need services. For example, Singleton's Cleaners is gone. There's no, there's no cleaners in Midtown. There is no, um, we could have a bowling alley. We, could have, we need a grocery store. There are things that we need in Midtown, and I don't believe that housing is it. I'm not finished. When I looked at the affordability, I said the city's being asked to support this project with the $4,623,000. It's my belief that business sparks housing, not the other way around. These funds should be used for business startups, incubator space, helping people grow businesses, manufacturing space, thus expanding the funds and, amount, and the amount of people that would be impacted. I'm trying to identify the public purpose of this project, not just the private gain. All upfront costs are assumed by the city. That's what's being required of us. The only thing I'm prepared to support this evening is the $400,000 that they're asking for the incentive for the project, for the water, water and the parking, I'm sorry, and stormwater improvements. <laughs> My, may I ask another question? Mm -hmm. If this project does not get built, there's no extra TIP money, is that correct? We just have the regular, do we have any TIP money at all in that uh, account? We have the 600000 we won't be spending on this project. Right, but I think what Ruth is asking is what is our, what, what TIF is generated right now in that fund? Like what, what is our tax increment currently? You know that? 
Well, the budget has ninety six thousand in it. We just it voted on. Yeah. Coming right. Yeah, about a hundred thousand. Right. About a hundred. That's what's clear. Would you come forward, Fred? We just voted on it. What's the annual TIF? Fred generated? Coulter, budget officer. Um, in the Midtown gets approximately a little bit less than four hundred thousand dollars a year in TIF money from the city and the county. It depends on what the millage rate that we adopt is as to what the final number will be. But somewhere in the, somewhere around 400000 Fred, Fred, hold on a second. I think that's a typo on that sheet. Um, if you look across on that line, it actually says 96000 No, the typo is on the resolution for the CRA budget. I checked it today. Okay. So our backup's wrong it, we got? No, the, the CRA resolution has a typo. The, the city resolution is not. There's two things. What Fred's telling you, that's the total TIF that comes back to the city. Yes. That's not the net the net that's available to be used outside of commitments for all the costs that we occur with staffing right. and all those things that is, is 96000 There's about $200,000 of yeah. debt service alone plus other costs. Yeah. So available to, available to be spent this coming year is 96000 Yes. Okay. But it wouldn't be there if we approved this project at all. It would be part of – no, I mean it will go to this project. Yeah. Well, a half a million is going to this project plus 75000 that's coming What we out. have in our fund balance would go to this project, I believe. The, what, the TIF that's currently generated from other properties in that CRA would not go to this project. This project would only – the TIF that this project creates would go to this project. Is that, that's correct. You yeah. can't – yeah. But the and upfront money the upfront, that's being asked for, where is it coming from? It's coming out of the CRA capital mm -hmm. accounts where we're using it for capital purposes. So what capital projects were we going to use it for? MLK Construction. Okay. As, uh, and I don't know I have all of them, but it's, so it's out of funds that were committed for other projects. Those projects then won't happen? Uh, they'll have to be funded somewhere else. Okay. And when you say the MLK project, are you talking about from Orange Avenue to yes. Shady Grove that would have gone underground, or are you talking about Orange Avenue to ISB? Orange Avenue to ISB. ISB. That's 400 and some thousand. Mm -hmm. um, of, it's a lot more than that. The total cost of that's over a million dollars. But and that's what we've already planned to do. Right. So that would not take place. Is right. what you're saying? We have to find another source. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this: You said you would not uh, support this project. The only portion of it that you would support is the four hundred thousand. Then you wouldn't support the TIF that this project generates either. I'm not supporting the project. Only the four hundred thousand. But and not the TIF and not the TIF. Okay. Not 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 eliminating the coffers of, of Zone Six. Well, no, the TIF of the future, the future TIF money. That's, no. Okay. Okay. <coughs> okay. Do we have any other comments? I have uh, no comments because I think the commission has spoken. But I, I guess I I will say that I came in tonight certainly anticipating my personal uh, support of this project. Uh, and I understand uh, all of the different statements that have been made, and I certainly respect my colleagues and everything that they have said. Uh, when you go into Midtown and you look, uh, it's, it's, it's been an old saying that if you have five fingers and one of them is bleeding, you have to do a little bit more for that particular finger than you would for the others. Um, and so my mentality, and it will remain my mentality, is that I'm – willing to do more uh, for Midtown than I'm willing to do perhaps that we've ever done in other areas because I believe that Midtown deserves that type of commitment. If my colleagues say that this is not that commitment, then I certainly will respect that, but I will not rest until I find the commitment that we as a community can embrace. I will still be embracing this project tonight because I believe that the cost that we are asking, first of all, 400 plus thousand dollars is public improvement that's going to be made back into the project. The $3.6 million has been illustrated tonight that will be generated from this project is over a course of 20 years. It's not given today, it's not given tomorrow, and it's only given based on the fact that it is what they create. If they do not create that level of value, they would not receive that. So, uh, you know, a half a million dollars is still an investment that we would be asked to make in, in this project. And I guess that is the level of commitment that I say that Midtown deserves at this time, also because I believe it's a good project. So with that said, if the applicant 
or none of my colleagues have no other comments? I got, I got some comments because I don't think I have a million dollars. It's too much money to invest in the Midtown area. Having lived here all my life, I don't see anybody else stepping to the plate saying we want to build something in the Midtown, and that's including JLL and anybody else. And how are we going to RF piece another person's project? Uh, that I'm not understanding either. Well, we, we can't, but we could RFP it for just for anybody who's willing yeah, but, to do it. But so, I, nobody's, I, no, not that I know it, nobody's willing to build anything in Midtown. Commissioner Henry, and when are the, you? Can I finish speaking, please? Okay, I just want to ask I know not to cut you off, but I'm at a point in my life where I want to see something happen in Midtown. I don't see. I don't. I don't see where five hundred five hundred thousand dollars an astronomical amount of money, based on some of the things we've done in the past. Might not have done it quite this way, but we we made incentives in the past for other projects. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go on record as saying I think it's a great project. Thank you. Do you think it's worth us to uh, take a leap of faith for that? You think uh, that it will um, end up improving other properties around that and the whole I, I neighborhood growth, growth, growth spurs growth no growth equals no growth and that's what we've had for 20 years no growth in that area so if this is an opportunity to spur some growth i'm willing to take the chance to spur the growth okay mr ivy mr mayor thank you for allowing me to speak again to this commission uh, i appreciate the conversation that needs to be had about this community. One of the things I would like to clear up for sure and let everybody know, the $4.1 million is not coming from the CRA. I went back with this developer and I asked him to fill this gap when the first $5.1 million was even introduced. We filled that gap with $3.6 million in, the, in just two weeks. So, therefore, no money, the only funds that we're asking to happen in this project is for your impact fees, your different small fees, because we're, we've asked for an incentive. There are other incentives that have been given to other projects that we didn't even ask for. We've come asking for a project to be built in Midtown. And at some point, we have to take a chance. I don't need an incentive if I'm building on the water. I don't, because the beauty that God has given us is already there. But as a developer, I can't go build a grocery store because I'm not in the grocery store business. So that's out, because I didn't go looking for a, a grocery store developer. When I brought JLL into the city over four and a half, five years ago, nothing happened for two years. During that process, because of the relationships that I have out in the financial world, I ran across another friend of mine who has taken his hard-earned money, his own money, got a company, a white company, out of Canada to come invest in an all-black neighborhood, basically. And here we are sitting up mad because $500,000 that we're asking for, we pay that a month in water bills, Mr. Mayor. Nobody's telling that what's the economic impact. Well, you're going to have 82 more units of water bills coming in to this community. That's money. You, this project will not only generate just for this area, but it will spur other growth throughout the Midtown community. And that's what we're trying to do. I'm sitting up here asking, and I understand, uh, Commissioner Gillian, because me and you have had some good conversations, and I really appreciate it because you did tell me the truth from the time I talked to you. But on this particular issue, we're not in this thing to sell it. We need to build it right now. And we're trying to build it. And with your vote, we can get it built. And Ruth, to answer your question, we're not sitting back looking for five years. We don't waste it three years in the process. So I have a developer here that in the next week, if you approve this, we'll be making an application to start the process. That's how committed this developer is. I know we've had many phone calls. I met with quite a few of you, and some I didn't. But I reached out to everybody that I possibly could in order to make this project work. It is the perfect. We don't know. This, the city is at no risk, except for what you're putting in, that we have had, had nothing in 20 years. 
So in 20 years, we're asking for $500,000. 500000 And we sitting up here like y'all giving us the mint. It's not a mint. Tell me who else outside this gentleman over here who's flown his partners down here, talked with the commission, met with them, out of Canada. I don't see anybody else coming into our community not knocking on the door like they're doing out in the West Speedway or on the beach side or downtown. So I'm asking this commission tonight to make a leap of faith. Jump out with us. It's, every agreement is not perfect. But we have taken everything back and say we would brunt the cost. But just help us with these small fees. It will be made back up in the utilities. If it spurs growth like it's projected to do, then guess what? We'll have money back in the till. Again, but we will never have money if we don't take a leap of faith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I got a comment. I've got a comment, okay? Sure. I would like to point out that we have made significant investments in CRAs on A1A, and while those values did increase, the catalyst that we were told repeatedly and we continue to be told that will spur development on the west side has never occurred. And the Sheraton was never built. It was the other hotel. So please don't walk out of here thinking that just because we get told this doesn't mean it's going to happen. The other project that we did down there on MOK that now sits empty and the rest of it was never finished, we were all thought that was going to act as a catalyst. So cautionary tale, it does not mean that just because you build something and put a lot of money in it, we put 100% of the TIF in those projects down there, that what was going to happen, we struggle on the west side of A1A, just like we do in the Midtown area with crime and drugs and getting that area to come back. So, again, I'm not going to support this project the way it's written. I would support it if it didn't have all this in here. But I am not, I do not believe that it's going to do what it's being told it's going to do. Great if it does, but I, I have too many concerns. Okay. All right. We have any comments? Commissioner Gillen? You, you know, I would be willing, if you, if you dropped the $600,000 they're looking for up front, 5-1 and 5-2, I would, I would support this with the transferability piece because it brings down our exposure. But with all of this together, the way that it's packaged, you know, with that transferability piece in there, it, it just, it's just too much for me. Okay, so if the transferability or signability was taken, I mean, no. you, could, you could be comfortable with the signability if 5.1 and 5.2 weren't Absolutely there? Absolutely not. Correct. Okay. And Commissioner Henry, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was just going to ask you, so you're, you're comfortable with everything as it's written, uh, this contract? Okay. Um, I agree with you. Um, I expanded on my concerns about the construction value, but the 5.1 and the 5.2 um, are, are things that if, if we could get uh, come to some sort of agreement on that, those, those are... I, I would really like to support this because I, I, you said many things, Commissioner Henry, about no growth, no growth. You don't do anything, you don't get anything. I don't want to expose uh, the city to something that we have very little detail about. Uh, this, is, this is unique in that um, other than a, a very small drawing and some, some good descriptions, we, we just don't know what this is. Um, so I would feel, I, I, I hesitate to just say no outright to this because I, I believe in development, and I believe that growth supports growth, and I believe that when private people want to put money into an area that needs it, not to you know turn turn my back. So, uh, if we could strike five point one, five point two, I could support this moving forward. That's still a four million dollar incentive. You know the three point three point six in TIF and the four hundred thousand for the parking lot. Right. Well, the three point six in TIF is only an incentive that's created. Right. Yeah. Right. Can I ask a question? On page two, they mention uh, CRA is requested to approve the agreement and authorize the use of CRA funds up to 613000 I thought you said there was only 96000 in there. That, that's money that's in, that's, that exists in the fund today. They, have, they six, have money in the bank in that trust fund, basically. They have so basically it would take all the money out of the bank <clears throat> that's okay. currently in the Midtown CRA because I see on the soft costs, five hundred thirty-eight thousand. If 
it's kind of a wash because if they build it, then we would get it, but we would not get the money, but we would not be given that money. Um, $400,000 for public parking and stormwater, we probably need to do that anyhow. Yeah. Um, 75000 uh, various city fees, 538000 there just... If they don't build it, we don't get it anyhow. If we no, they don't build it. We ate that five thirty eight. We ate it. We, we spent well, all the they, money in the trust fund and got nothing. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the six thirteen? Yeah. Yep. Okay. That's why I'm saying if, if it didn't have five point one and five point two, with the looseness of who's actually going to operate this thing, I could support it because that's that's that six hundred six hundred thousand. And that's so what that's I a said. sticking point. And then at that point, there would also be there would there would be money in the trust fund. We could continue to get MLK done. There were other projects that that we've got, you know, that we'd like to do in that area. So because remember, if we take that money out, there's only going to be ninety six thousand dollars in that fund, and it will be years. It'll be five years before you know this project is built, occupied, and those catalyst projects have been built. Okay, so the and they're on the tax rolls. So which is a sticking point? The so six hundred thirteen. Okay, here's what he's talking about taking out. Yeah. In your backup on page five, five point okay. one and five point two. Okay. Bob's talking about removing those, and it references the five thirty eight, and it references the seventy five thousand. And he's talking, and that's the six hundred plus that you referenced in the very All right. beginning. All right. Okay. He's saying remove these two clauses, mm -hmm. then and he could approve it. Is that what you're saying? And, and I would leave, and that I would be okay leaving the transferability piece in there at that point because. Mm -hmm. At that point, really, our investment is the 400000 for the parking lot, which is something we need to do anyways with some stormwater, right. and then the future TIF, which if it doesn't get generated, we don't lose it. So I'm, I'm comfortable with that, but... But that's kind of what we said months ago, I mean, a month or so ago when we talked about it, is no money up front, then you do the TIF, you know, after. Mr. Baird. Go ahead. Let me see if I understand, because I want to be sure we, we're clear on, on these points. Uh, the TIF, it would be more like a normal uh, development agreement and incentive package that we normally provide for anybody coming in and building in our city. The, the Probably the single f difference, difference with that adjustment is you're talking about 100% TIF mm -hmm. based on the value of what's constructed, mm -hmm. and you're talking that for the period from which the CRA currently, uh, the life of that CRA, which is 20 years or less depending on... Uh, the, um, the how fast the, pro the project gets CO'd. So I, I, th there's some issues, and the reason I'm saying this because there are some issues about other uh, extensions, but it would only be valid for the period from which the CRA exists or the redevelopment district exists right. as it is now. That's the way it's written. That's in the, the way it's written. Now. Okay. Um, okay, well, go Mr. Yes, Marsh. If we would delete 5.1 and 5.2, that would answer Mr. Gilliland's concerns, I believe, and I'd ask the chair to ask Mr. Gilliland that. Yes, Ms. Gilliland, is that correct? You, you, you can keep 7.2 if you get rid of 5.1 and 5.2. Uh, Mr. Mayor, with the commission's permission, we would delete 5.1 and 5.2. Okay. Well, I think you might have be on to something. Mm -hmm. That's his transferability. That was the transferability. That was his breaking point. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, well, then, uh, do we, how do we amend this? Uh, Who made the motion in the second? Composer. I don't have a motion uh, in your second. Uh, All right, I'll make a motion. No one? We don't we have don't one. We don't have a motion in the second. Make a motion to approve the incentive agreement deleting uh, Section 5.1 <laughs> and Section 5.2. Second. All right, we have a motion from Commissioner Gilliland and a second from Commissioner White uh, to amend this, the agreement as discussed. Um, all right, we have a motion on the floor and a second on the floor. Is there any other comments? I mean, this is, yes. Yeah, so. All right, so taking out 5.1, just so that the, um, the citizens hear what we're doing, that's taking out the $538,000 that they're asking for all of those soft costs. Mm -hmm. It's taking out the 75000 that they asked for in cash to buy the lot, mm -hmm. correct? And that's all that's doing. So then how does that affect the... Um, 5.3. And we are going to, 5.3 is the 3 the, million. The TIF. That, right, the oh, TIF. That's the TIF. That would in. remain in the agreement, as yeah, I understand it. And this is happen. only for this project. So if we have a new yes. business generated, that TIF would go with that. Yes, that's right. Okay. 
So there would be no cash up front, mm-hmm. except, but we would do the stormwater improvements. And, the, well, there still would be the release of the lien. That's still not cash, but it's a release of the lien that's yeah. on one of the parcels. Correct, Jim? Yes. So you're back to what we normally do if we do one. They have to build. Project goes online. It, it generates more revenue from their taxes, <laughs> and that's what they get back is only the difference. Correct, Bob and Jim? Is the difference in what their project generates. generates. Okay. Yes, correct. After we look at the baseline and then what their right. project brings in, yeah. are they going to be able to meet the eleven thousand um, no. that we've 11, without the soft? Yeah. Did well, we say eleven or did we go to eight? That's up to them because it, that that impacts if they. I'm sorry, if it doesn't, a million. If it doesn't increase, if it doesn't increase value, taxable value, they're only going to get back what is generated by taxable value. Mm-hmm. Some of those soft costs are not going to be included in that. So it's immaterial to us whether it's there or not. It's this is just an estimate of what what amount we think they're going to get back over that period of time. But it's strictly up to them based on the value of the product they produce. So in other words, we don't we don't we don't lose we anything. don't lose anything if right. they don't recuperate three point six million. But the project would be more valuable if they did that. And, and it's limited to it's that eighteen to, that. to twenty year period for recovery. Yes. Okay. Just so we're clear, understand that. So if the value does not go up, there is no payment. Okay? I mean, that's true of any of the projects that we yeah. do. If the value does not go up, go up, there is no payment to them whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do we have any other questions or comments? None? Well, we'll take a roll call vote. Okay. And this is on the amendment? This is I, on the I made, amendment. I made the motion, motion. without So it is amended, five. and that would not be in there. At all, no if this sense, passes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. just make sure I understand. Okay, no Can five eight, no five one, no five two. That's the amendment, correct? That's correct. All right. No five point one and five point two. Five point one and five point two. Okay. So the motion was to approve this without five one and five two. There, there wasn't an original motion, so it's not an amendment. That's the that is the amendment. The motion. motion. On the floor. I thought we did. I don't know. We were discussing this, without the, a motion. The vote will be to approve <laughs> the agreement. <laughs> I said the vote will be to approve the amended agreement. Mm-hmm. Correct. Okay. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the amended agreement. Uh, the roll call vote, Mr. Com- Magna. Commissioner White? Yes. Commissioner Gilliland? Yes. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Reed? Yes. Commissioner Traeger? Yes. Commissioner Woods? Yes. Mayor Derek L. Henry? Yes. Uh, well, uh, we uh, uh, I think that's that's the business for this uh, meeting, and I uh, want to congratulate you all. Uh, gentlemen, I don't know how you feel, but uh, obviously we feel very good. <laughs> so hopefully, I, I'm sure you don't. Uh, okay, this, do we have any comments from the commission? I do have to entertain. This meeting is adjourned for uh, 10 minutes. We'll start our regularly scheduled commission meeting at 7.30.